What's up guys? Today we're going through some quantitative reasoning, otherwise known as math, practice problems for the DAT. Here we go. Alrighty, so this video will be the first of many DAT practice videos, so let me quickly break down how this video is going to go. First, I'm going to show you a practice problem, and I would suggest that you pause the video at this point so that you can work through it on your own. After a couple seconds, I will highlight the correct answer so you know if you got it right. And then lastly, I'm going to have a step-by-step -step instruction on how to solve the, the math problem. So I'm going to try my best to include chapters into this video. I've never done this before, so hopefully it works. If you can see them, that means it worked. But I'm going to include these chapters in the video so that you don't have to watch the instructional part of the video if you don't want to or if you don't need to. If you already know how to solve it, don't waste your time watching the instructional video. Move on to the next problem and get more practice in. But that's probably enough of me talking. Let's get into some practice problems. Don't forget to pause the video. All right, for this equation, simplify the expression x squared y cubed times x cubed y cubed all over x. So there's two rules that we need to make sure we're aware of uh, to solve this. The first is x to the a times x to the b equals x to the a plus b. And the second is x to the a divided by x to the b equals x to the a minus b. So if you don't know those, make sure you write them down somewhere. Those are really important to, to be aware of. So let's get started. First thing I would do with this problem is recognize that the problem they gave us is the same thing as separating them all out. Now normally I would just do this in my head, I wouldn't write it down because that takes more time, but if it helps, write it down so then you don't have any errors. And then recognizing that this that I've just written is very similar to this uh, first rule here at the top. And so I would combine the x's first, which we know we can do x to the power of 2 plus 3, because we've combined um, this guy here and this guy here to make that. And then if we, I'll erase this to get that out of the way. If we combine the y's, Next, we have y to the power of 3 plus 3, doing the same thing, but with the two y's. And then don't forget, this is all over x still. So now, simplifying that, we have x to the power of 5 times y to the power of 6, all over x. And now, we have moved on to this second rule, of x to the a over x to the b equals x to the a minus b. So I'll write that down here. Our next step, recognizing that these x's are what we're looking at. Because this is a y and this is an x, these guys do not interact. We don't care about them. So y to the sixth will stay the same. So what we have here next is x to the fifth minus one times y to the sixth and Simple math, that becomes x to the fourth times y to the sixth. All right, problem number two. Okie dokie. So the temperature in Australia is a 32 degrees Celsius. What is the temperature in Fahrenheit? A, zero, B, 54.2, C, 89.6, or D, 107.3. This one's pretty straightforward as long as you know the equation um, to convert Fahrenheit into Celsius or Celsius into Fahrenheit. So I provided both of them here, um, but only memorize one of them. It's a waste of time to memorize both. I'll give you the same information. So the first is F, or degrees in Fahrenheit, 
equals 1.8 times the degrees in Celsius plus 32, or the other one, degrees in Celsius equals 5 ninths divided by F minus 32. Um, so I prefer the top one here, um, but whichever one works better in your head, just use that. So to get started here, we'll start off with taking this equation and simply plugging in 32 degrees Celsius. So we'll have this. Now I've done this beforehand, so I have it written down, but you'll, this is where you'll probably need a calculator, unless you're a magician and can do 32 times 1.8 in your head uh, efficiently. So what I have here is 57.6 plus 32, which means Fahrenheit equals 89, 89.6 degrees which if we look over here, you can see that it's answer C. Now there is a second way to solve this, and this is actually what I do, is I honestly don't memorize either of these equations. I memorize, I'll write this extra thing. I memorize F equals two times C, plus 30. So this equation here is not true. That is not a perfect formula. This is the one that will give you the exact answer. But this one, F equals two times C plus 30, I can do that in my head. And it'll give you an answer that's about right, probably just a little bit high. So I'll just run through this really fast so that you can see that it'll still give us a fairly accurate number. So here, F equals 2C plus 30. And if we remember up here, it was 32 degrees Celsius. So F equals 2 times 32 plus 30. I don't even need a calculator for that. We can just write it down and keep moving. So that is 94. And we know because I increased the value from 1.8 to 2 and then took off a little bit just for math, but not enough to really counteract this. We know that this estimation is going to be a little high. So we got 94. And so I should take that and think, all right, it's probably a little less than 94. And you look at your answers here. That's not a little less than 94. This is so my, my first gut is probably C. 54, way too small, and zero, not even close. So I would still answer C and move on. If you have a ton of time afterwards, then you could come back and double check using the actual formula. But the math section is all about being fast. So here's a dat tip for you, is that the math section or quantitative reasoning section is all about speed. To do well in the section, you just need to minimize the use of the calculator function because the calculator is just a waste of time. It's, it's all on the computer. It's very slow and clunky. So you, you want to use just brain power as often as possible. And so that's why I like this here, the F equals 2C plus 30, because it saves me a lot of time and I can just move on to the next one without struggle. All right, we're getting close to the end, but don't go anywhere yet because I mentioned in my introduction video that I want to create a community of students, professionals, and other community members who love dentistry and provide a place where we can help each other and share thoughts and experiences. So in an effort to get to know each other a little better, here is our first conversation starter. What is your favorite thing about dentistry so far? And I'll pin my own answer in the comment section below. So go check it out, and while you're down there, you might as well answer it yourself. And just as a fun little extra thing, I'll give a shout out to one or two of you for commenting. All right, if you've made it to the end, thank you for watching. Here's a summary table of all of the equations or formulas that we've covered in today's video. If you want to see more DAP prep videos or tips and tricks on all things pre-dental, then hit that subscribe button. And I'll see you in the next one.